go ahead and start. <clears throat> Pleased to be here at the Capitol with Governor Gavin Newsom. Um, once again, we're here because uh, important matters impacting the people of the state of California, quite honestly, the American people, are occurring in Washington, D.C. And, and once again, California is being called upon to act. This morning, President Trump made a declaration that he had to use emergency powers in order to try to address uh, a challenge at our border, and he called it a national emergency. President Trump, Trump got one thing right this morning about his declaration when he said, I didn't have to do this. He's right. He didn't have to do this. In fact, he can't do this because the U.S. Constitution gives Congress, not the President, the powers to direct dollars, the power of the purse. The Constitution, Article I, talks of the separation of powers between the executive and the legislative branch. Here's what Donald Trump also got wrong. No one in America is above the law, not even the President of the United States. The President does not have power to act frivolously, taking the powers of this 240 plus year democracy and using them in ways that were never intended. He has the power to declare a national emergency. But this is not 9 11. This is not the Iran hostage crisis of 1979. This is a president showing his disdain for the rule of law and our. U.S. Constitution. For California, seeing this is nothing new. What's perhaps most ironic about this is that even the President knows that his declaration of an emergency for the nation is dubious. He himself said that this will be challenged in court. He already knows it. He himself said that he's probably going to lose in court. He already knows it. He himself said that this is going to be appealed, and he'll probably lose, and he already knows it. He himself said that he's hoping to get to the U.S. Supreme Court and then use the Supreme Court to try to win something that is nothing more than a campaign promise. He himself has said that he's going to try to use our the United States Supreme Court, one of the most cherished institutions of this democracy, to fulfill a political promise. I believe President Trump is telegraphing that he knows that this declaration of national emergency is not a true national emergency, that he knows he will lose in court, and that he is hoping to use the U.S. Supreme Court as a tool in his game to fulfill a campaign promise. The consequences of that are harm, harm to Californians, harm to all Americans, harm to our institutions working here in California to interdict drugs, harm to our men and women in uniform here in California and beyond who will lose out on resources that are there for them and their families at our installations militarily throughout this country, and harm to the nation's rule of law and our U.S. Constitution. That's why today Governor Gavin Newsom and I are here and we will be joined by several sister states to say to our people throughout this country that we will stand up for your rights. We will stand up for your rights as taxpayers, as men and women in uniform, and we will stand up for the rule of law, for the Constitution, and we will stand up for the institutions of this democracy which have for more than 240 years worked the right way. President Trump got it right when he said he didn't have to do this. Mr. President, you shouldn't do this. Let me now yield to uh, the governor of the state of California, Gavin Newsom. Thank you. And, uh, I'm pleased uh, by the comments of the Attorney General and I'm grateful for his leadership. Uh, and uh, I'm certainly very supportive of our efforts to, to sue the administration and to see uh, the president in court. 
Uh, fortunately, Donald Trump is not the last word. The courts will be the last word. Uh, I was yesterday up in uh, Butte County, Paradise. I was there with uh, a lot of children that were displaced, not only from their homes, but their schools, their families literally torn asunder, um, members of the family uh, that uh, are in different schools in different cities, some that are not even going to school, getting educated, still waiting for FEMA support, still waiting for disaster recovery money into their community. It's interesting uh, that we are standing here today talking about an emergency when $12 billion was appropriated by the House of Representatives and the Senate and the President are not moving that money to not only California for disaster relief, for real emergency, but nor are they allowing those dollars to go forward in Georgia and Texas and elsewhere. I just find that ironic and interesting. We have a real disaster that needs to be cleaned up, $12 billion sitting there, not even utterance, not even a reference in today's press conference of a real pressing need and a real human crisis that's manifesting in real time. And that's not an abstract thing. As I said, I, I, I witnessed it firsthand, not just the heroism of the first responders uh, suppressing those fires, but in the aftermath, the struggle that persists in places like Butte County. Uh, what is remarkable about this is we also stood here a week ago uh, and recognized that there was legitimacy to the concerns about uh, drug, uh, drugs flowing through the border. We talked about the cartel activity uh, a week ago uh, that persists uh, and is becoming more and more acute in parts of California. We talked about our desire to work with the President of the United States on drug interdiction, to work to partner with him to address the legitimate concerns around our ports of entry as it relates to fentanyl and methamphetamine and marijuana uh, that's crossing the border, cocaine, et cetera. We talked about uh, redeploying uh, and partnering uh, our redeployed members of the National Guard uh, with the DEA and other uh, federal agencies uh, to promote more comprehensive interdiction. That is exactly the work that now is at risk because of this declaration of emergency. That irony is not lost or should not be lost on any California. No other state is going to be more impacted by this declaration of emergency than the state of California. And the irony of this is uh, the actual work that was effective, the actual work that is responsible and responsive to the real and uh, legitimate concerns around fentanyl and methamphetamine, heroin and cocaine uh, that is being done within the state of California is now being put at risk for a vanity project, for a monument to stupidity, a wall that will do nothing to impact drugs coming over our border. Ask any expert. Don't ask politicians. Certainly don't ask the President of the United States. Ask any expert how these drugs are getting across the border. If you think it's an image of an individual with 400 pounds of cocaine on their, in their backpack, then you're delusional. The drugs are coming through the ports of entry through traditional means, vehicles, tractor trailers, coming over through drones, airplanes, coming all up and down the coast of California in boats. And the interdiction policies that we are engaged in that we want to enhance in California now are being put at risk because of this political crisis that is being manufactured to get the president out of the rut he clearly is in. Nancy Pelosi has run circles around the president of the United States, not once, now twice. He's been embarrassed and his base needs to be fed. And as a consequence of that, He's impacting the lives of millions and millions of Californians and millions and millions of Americans that demand and deserve better. The legitimate crisis with drugs in this nation can be addressed appropriately and thoughtfully. And we want to work collaboratively and we want to work in the spirit of partnership. I don't want to be a sparring partner with President Trump. We want to be a working partner. But he makes it almost impossible when he plays these games and manufactures a crisis and creates the conditions where we have no other choice than to sue the administration, join other states, join our partners in the federal government to do the same, to go through the theater of, well, as I said a few weeks ago, the absurd, uh, and to you know, sort of create a sideshow to the real work that should be done uh, in cooperation. Um, if only we had a president uh, that wanted to do the right thing.
And so I just want to compliment our Attorney General for his ongoing uh, vigilance, standing up on behalf of the people of the state of California. And I want to encourage other states, particularly those border state governors, to do the same. Uh, and uh, as we said in our release, uh, Donald Trump will see you in court.